Okay, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all of you wherever you are on this planet to attend this Zoom meeting. My name is Eli Pradavant and I'm the founder and director of the Women's World Summit Foundation, an international NGO uh, that was created in Geneva, Switzerland and which convenes annually for empowerment programs around the world. All of them are shared on the website to help advance the status of women's rights for equality, peace and development, and also the status of children's rights to ending violence and abuse against children and youth. As a civil society organization since 1991, we launch today a new development program ideas for change, shifting narratives, calling for urgent action, and contributing to an increasing demand, especially from women and youth, to create a more just and peaceful world where the human rights relations, gender equality, deep solidarity and respect for the environment are anchored in the political agendas and delivered in all cultures and societies. Our parallel event will touch on the need for urgent gender equality to empower strong climate action to save our planet and life depending on it. I will start by introducing our new WWSF campaign, 75% Gather the Women, Children and Youth who represent 75% of the world population, 6 billion strong, to unite and claim a seat at all decision-making tables. Followed by a presentation by Rihana Riyayawala, Vice President of the Self-Employed Self Women's Association, SEVA from India, who will address tackling climate change. Okay. So what is the 75% campaign all about? Now that you know that women, children and youth represent 75% of the world population who have almost nothing or little to say in shaping the social, economic and political space in which we live, this can change with 75% co-leadership. Our message is about changing course while facing simultaneously three horrendous challenges in our world today. The rapid global climate change, the global health pandemic, and now a new brutal war in Ukraine. The 75 campaign must inspire change and in our violence-prone world, by mobilizing the six billion to rise, to demand system change, count our actions for good, and ignite a culture where 75% of the world population is treated with respect and take care and take part in the decision-making processes in every country. The existing state of gender imbalance threatens humanity as well as the whole planet. We must no longer accept that the 6 billion women, children and youth are removed from decision-making processes that affect everyone's daily life. We need world leaders that have a higher consciousness and co-design with 75% of the world's population, which includes our voices and vision for a violence-free era. A future without the equal participation of women, children and youth is doomed. It has been said that where there is no vision, the people perish. Women or woman, the life giver who lays the first foundations of education must also have the right to co-create with men better conditions for those she brings into the world. So our 75% Actors for Good campaign is our rallying call 
for the creation of a worldwide civil society coalition, including women's and children's rights and peace organizations, development and social change makers and NGO leaders, working cooperatively to create a 75 campaign in every country, united by their actions for good and claiming a seat at the decision-making tables. We believe that together the 75% movement, 6 billion strong, has the power to end the centuries-old globally endorsed problem of women's low representation in leadership. We don't need increased defense budgets, but we do need to build government departments for peace building and climate responsible citizens learning about the power of nonviolence. Our message is clear, not by power, not by might, but through our spirit for good will we conquer. Moving from United Nations to creating serving nations for good is our ultimate vision for this campaign. And by speaking truth to power, we shall start a new era for collaboration and develop guidelines for an unstoppable movement for good. This is the mission of 75% in a nutshell. There is so much more to say, but we don't have the time today. But if you stay connected with us, you will learn as we go on what this is all about. So some practical steps and objectives of the 75 campaign include building a powerful international 75 coalition, 75% coalition with partner organizations for the realization of the unfinished business of too many broken promises and commitments made at numerous UN conferences, reviews and declarations. Second, share the campaign and gather the women, children and youth, all actors for good and unite and claim a seat at the table. Third, organizing annual Geneva 75% forums to discuss systems change and learning about leadership for the realization of our common mission. Inviting 75% partner, partners to the forum sharing their national actions for good and ongoing mobilization efforts, learning from invited speakers about human rights narratives and find solutions that empower them to move forward in transforming their countries for a new era. And lastly, creating initiatives and advocacy, demanding from world leaders to change course and move the direction and move in the direction of one world, one humanity for good. This is time for peace. As Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, who calls himself a real strong feminist, and I quote, today, women's leadership is a cause. Tomorrow, it must be the norm. We thank him for his message to the world and to empower us to take on this challenge. The sheer number of 6 billion of us gives this new campaign legitimacy to demand co-leadership with men to tackle, on the, tackle the present urgent challenges and responsibilities and ensure that our leaders' promises do not remain forever unfinished business. We are not excluding male actors for good in the campaign, and there are many around the world. National 75 campaign leaders will need to convince their political and economic leaders, presidents and prime ministers, leaders of multinational companies and philanthropists to co-create together with 75% a new paradigm for good and pathways for peace leaving no one behind. Women who give life to all people have the right to govern their destiny. We need to see more women taking part in governments and in the Council of Ministers 
in all constructive societal activities. And quite, and quite a few countries are moving in that direction already. They are our role models. We invite you to find out on internet what your country's official action plans include about peace building, gender equality, sustainable development, education, and urgent action to tackle the corona pandemic and climate change. In concluding, I take this opportunity of inviting you to register your organization as a 75% partner and share the campaign wherever you are, in your community, workplaces, family and churches, become a change maker in the way the world interacts with women, children and youth and promote a new culture of co-leadership with men our eternal partners to build a future without fear and pain. Your registration is key to be invited to our annual Geneva forums, where we will strategize to reach our dream, which is when women, children and youth unite and work for a better future. We will be, it will be a force such as the world has never known. So let's go. A new world will be born with six billion across actors for good, solidarity and compassion in co-leadership with men. Join us and thank you for listening and solidarity. You can also ask your questions at the end of our event. Put them in the chat where you also find relevant other links to our concept note and registration forms. Thank you again. We are now moving into the second part of our side event and start with a video entitled Women's Work and Food Systems by SEVA, followed by a presentation from the SEVA Vice President, Rihanna Riyavala, who will share with you the self Employed Women's Association in India. Rihanna, you have the floor. Food, the most basic necessity for the humankind, ironically, has the most complex system. Food must not be reduced to security, to a system, or to a state's trading language. Food is the culture of life. If access to safe, nutritious food is a fundamental right, why are 820 million people living in hunger? Why are people in food exporting countries sleeping hungry? More than half of the world's workforce is engaged in agricultural production. <laughs> When we talk about the food systems, it involves not only farmers, but agriculture workers, laborers, food processors, sellers, distributors, and a lot more. Today, the face of agriculture is female. This lack of a woman's voice and visibility is the most crucial cause for the fractured and inequitable food system. Therefore, the first area to rebuild from the bottom up is the global food supply system and organizing is the key. आधुनिक टेक्नोलॉजी वापरी सीखी Rodi 
सफाई चोखाई पैकिंग वेचाण बधु अमेज कर अटक्या अमे अमरी बेकरी और भोजन न केन्द्र खोल कमला एक मिनिट संगठित थी सीस्टम तो सुधारी पर एक बे त्रो चार पांच छ सात आठ नौ दस अगियारेर एस डी जी पूरा कर अमरा जी हजारों ने लाखों श्रमजीवी बहनों ने एवं सीस्टम जो है कि जमने पूरत पोषण और सामान भरू जीवन मे संगठन मत मार गामन के देशन नहीं आखी दुनिया में जो है तो ज बेड़ो पार Namaste and a warm welcome to all of you. Today I represent more than 2.1 million poor women workers from informal economy organized with Seva. Seva, a trade union founded by Shrimati Ila Ben Bhatt. We started organizing <coughs> in the city of Ahmedabad from the state of Gujarat, and today we have organically spread over 18 states of India. we would be completing a 50 years of organizing the poor women workers from informal economy in next month twin goals of seva are full employment and self reliance full employment employment that provides with employment security income security food security and social security by self reliance what we mean is not just economical self reliance but then also the decision making power of the members also increases to achieve our goal we follow a very integrated approach first and foremost it's organizing to bring in the collective strength voice visibility and validity of our members secondly we invest a lot in technical as well as managerial capability of our members so that this workers doesn't remain the worker but then they become the owners and managers of their own organizations and or of their own work we capital formation as capital formation is the surest weapon to fight poverty and lastly social security <coughs> we see to it that at least healthcare child care and food security comes to our members to achieve our goals we follow a joint strategy of struggle and development that is unions and collectives the struggle is towards bringing in the voice visibility and validity of the members while through development activities we strengthen women's bargaining power and offer them new alternatives and bring them into the mainstream economy towards the members towards that the members have their own economic organization which could be in the form of producers collectives assets cooperatives and lately we have also gone for for profit and not for profit companies to scale up the interventions seva's approach is demand based and works for the issues and needs of the members two third of the membership of seva comes from rural areas while organizing in rural areas in mid 80s it was experienced that there is an excess of labor and less of employment opportunity and the seva worked towards creating alternate employment opportunities based on this skill set available in the local communities traditional resources and the needs of the members the livelihood of the members in the rural areas are dependent on multiple employment opportunities majority of them are dependent upon agriculture and allied activities for their livelihood which includes small and marginal farmers landless agriculture laborers sharecroppers casual laborers animal husbandry and much more alongside other non farm activities like weaving handicrafts etc the major challenge faced today by the rural workers is climate change and sustainable agriculture climate change has major has done major damage to the livelihoods of the rural households making them more vulnerable over the last few years we are experiencing that the rainfall pattern has changed the incidence of flooding and its effect have increased landslides droughts melting of glaciers heat waves and cold cold waves 
frequent cyclones etc are increasing all this have resulted into large scale damage to crops and houses change in cropping patterns erosion of fertile soil decreased land fertility increase in types of incidence of various health issues increased salinity and fluoride content in the groundwater vulnerabilities to climate change is, is an unbalanced interplay of several factors such as social economic and political capital or the lack of it the climate impacts are neither created equally nor distributed equally it is important that our commitment to increase the economic prosperity must also be a commitment to increase the ecological prosperity of planet earth seva has been actively promoting the cause of green livelihoods green energy campaign and eco-friendly agriculture practices to mitigate the impact of climate change seva members have focused on green skills and newer kind of employments both in farm based and non farm based sectors the different activities undertaken by seva in this context includes use of solar energy in salt farming agriculture solar lighting rooftop solar etc setting up of an off season solar park promoting organic farming and production of vermicompost encouraging nursery raising farm planning and farm management to build resilient in agriculture energy planning and budgeting ensuring food security at the local level through farmers owned agriculture value chain company like rudy multi trading company use of smokeless stoves in the villages rainwater harvesting at the grassroots level deepening of wells and ponds Besides this sustainable agriculture growth in a developing country like India where 86% of the agriculture is conducted by small and marginal farmers can largely be secured through transformation of subsistence agricultural production into a market oriented agriculture economy and this calls for an urgent need to promote revive indigenous crop varieties and reverse the loss of agrobiodiversity caused due to market drivers Indigenous crops are more resilient to climate variations farmers have better knowledge of handling them and traditional crops generally meet the food preferences of communities making it all the more important to create measures to promote and revive them Secondly it is also important to reduce the waste of agriculture produces at all the stages from farm to plate is essential especially during the post harvest stage thirdly adaptation is always a local phenomenon hence there is a need to integrate traditional knowledge with the scientific to develop locally suited climate resilient strategies for agriculture lastly i would like to mention our founder shrimati ila ben bhat says there are three basic needs of life food clothing and shelter which are vital to survival of all human beings and three basic services that is primary health care primary education and primary financial services if these six basic needs can met at the local level or village level this would lead to cutting and leading to cutting down the distance between producers and consumers would reduce dependence on fossil fuels leading to holistic development of the society and nurturance of economy this would also lead to addressing the issues of hunger malnutrition mass migration unemployment illiteracy poverty and much more with this i would like to thank wwsf and sister ali for joining hands together to work for the rural poor women workers in a fight against poverty and achieving economic freedom for the rural poor thank you thank you all